This video is brought to you by Novium. Stick around to the end to find out how you can elevate your workspace with a Novium hover pen. Imagine the Earth shrunk down to the size of your thumbnail. Every bustling city, sprawling desert and yawning ocean in miniature, each reduced to mere fractions of a millimeter. All eight billion of us squeezed into a space the size of a postage stamp. Pack our planet into a sphere just 1.7 centimeters across, and the Earth would turn into one of the most enigmatic objects in the universe, a black hole. A black hole is a cosmic chasm, a trap door with a famously ferocious appetite. Once you're hauled in by its mighty gravitational pull, you are imprisoned for good, with no chance of parole. But where exactly do black holes lead? That is one of the ultimate questions in all of astronomy. Answering it could reveal some of the cosmos's biggest secrets. Could black holes be doorways to another universe? You are watching V101 Space. My name's Rob, and if you enjoy diving into the wonders of space, don't forget to subscribe for much more to come. Your heart beats hard in your chest, your skin clammy with sweat. Panic sets in as you realize you are well and truly lost. You're stuck inside a maze, and every promising path just seems to send you deeper into the labyrinth. You would experience something similar if you were caught in the vice-like grip of a black hole. However, to truly understand black holes, we need to change the way we think about gravity. At school, we're taught that gravity is an invisible, attractive force between two objects. That the moon orbits the Earth, for example, because the Earth is pulling on the moon with its gravity. This was the way that Isaac Newton first introduced the idea of gravity in the 1600s. But physicists haven't thought of gravity in that way for over a century. Newton's notions of gravity have long since been replaced by Albert Einstein's, specifically his general theory of relativity. According to Einstein, gravity isn't a pull at all. Instead, it is simply the result of curved space. To see how this works, imagine taking the sheet off your bed and holding it tightly at the four corners. Next, place a heavier ball in the center to represent the Earth. The sheet will sag and dip in the middle. You could then roll a tennis ball around the rim of the dip. In other words, you made the tennis ball orbit the heavier ball. Crucially, there was no pull involved. The heavier ball wasn't pulling on the tennis ball. Instead, the tennis ball just followed the curvature of the sheet caused by the presence of the heavier ball. From the outside, this looks like the pull of gravity, but there is no such thing. It's a mirage. The heavier an object is, the deeper the dip it makes in the sheet of space. Physicists call these dips gravity wells. When the biggest stars die, their cores collapse and create gravity wells so deep that clambering out of them would require you to travel faster than the speed of light. As far as we know, that's impossible. It is these inescapable gravity wells that are more commonly known as black holes. Another way of thinking about black holes is that they distort the fabric of space to such extremes that all exit routes actually curve back around. Like the labyrinth, all apparent paths out only send you deeper in. But into where exactly? The first person to solve the equations of Einstein's general theory of relativity was German physicist Karl Schwarzschild. It's an even more impressive feat when you know that he did it while serving in the German army during the First World War. Except Einstein's equations have two possible solutions, each with time running in the opposite direction. 
Which one to pick? Naturally, physicists chose the one that made gravity look like the attractive force we're used to. After all, gravity appears to pull stuff in, it doesn't push it away. But some physicists have questioned why we've been so quick to dismiss the other solution. Could the exact opposite of a black hole also exist? Imagine watching a film of a black hole snacking on a cosmic meal, but played in reverse. Instead of stuff being sucked in and never being able to escape, it would be spat out and never able to return. In the great cosmic maze, all paths would lead out instead of in. Such a time-reversed black hole is known as a white hole. Astronomers have never seen a white hole, and there is no evidence that they are any more than a numerical sleight of hand, a mathematical glitch in the matrix. Just because Einstein's equations permit them to exist, it doesn't mean that they actually do. White holes would be incredibly hard to spot, as from a distance they would look a lot like black holes. They could even have rings of material circling them. Around a black hole, the disk is the queue of material waiting to be consumed, but it could equally be a disk of material spat out by a white hole. Unless you're close enough to actually see the material appearing or disappearing, it's tricky to tell the difference. Yet the biggest problem with white holes is that they seem to violate one of physics' most sacrosanct rules, the infamous second law of thermodynamics. It says that the universe is supposed to get messier and less ordered over time. We are a prime example of this. Our bodies wrinkle and wither as time passes. Black holes follow the same rules. They make the universe messier as they mercilessly rip stars apart. But what about a white hole? Play a video of a black hole backwards, and suddenly the mess is miraculously tidied. Disparate pieces come together, and an entire star is ejected. The universe becomes instantly neater. White holes would be the cosmic equivalent of Benjamin Button, aging in reverse. This is the main reason that most physicists and astronomers don't think white holes can exist in our universe. Our universe. It's still possible that white holes exist in another universe, one where time runs in the opposite direction. What's more, Einstein's equations allow a black hole to be connected to a white hole. Enter a black hole in our universe and you could be spat out of a white hole in another. Officially, the connection between a black hole and a white hole is known as an Einstein-Rosen bridge. Yet these tunnels have a more colloquial name, wormholes. Wormholes take their name from the choices facing a worm sitting on top of an apple. If the worm wants to get to the bottom of the apple, it has two options. It either crawls around the outside or it chews a tunnel through the middle. Such a shortcut would be a literal wormhole. In astronomy, there are several varieties of wormhole, with the Einstein-Rosen bridge the first to be discussed. But before you start daydreaming of using a wormhole to disappear into another universe, wormholes have problems of their own. A wormhole is known as traversable if a particle is able to travel through it. Except, Einstein's general theory of relativity forbids the existence of traversable wormholes. According to Einstein and Rosen's calculations, a wormhole is so unstable it would collapse before anything had a chance to travel through it. That hasn't stopped other physicists from looking for ways that a wormhole could be propped open, however. One idea is to use strange-sounding exotic matter, which bizarrely would have negative energy. We don't even know if this matter exists, though. It may sound like white holes and wormholes are a lost cause then, but there are some glimmers of hope. 
Einstein's general theory of relativity is not the only show in town. Quantum mechanics is the other big beast in the physics zoo, dealing instead with the rules of the universe on the scale of subatomic particles. The two theories do not see eye to eye. Physicists would love to merge them together into a single theory, one capable of explaining the entirety of the universe, from the smallest subatomic particle to the largest galaxies. Although yet to be found, such a theory is known either as a theory of everything or a theory of quantum gravity. One of the most promising candidates is called loop quantum gravity. According to Einstein's general theory of relativity, the fabric of space is impeccably smooth. Loop quantum gravity says otherwise. Imagine zooming in on space with the universe's most powerful microscope. According to loop quantum gravity, we would see that, like your bedsheet earlier, space is actually made of a series of tiny stitches. These minuscule stitches are the loops that give the theory its name, and we are talking really small. There would be more stitches in a cubic centimetre of space than there are cubic centimetres of space in the entire observable universe. A staggering 1,000 trillion 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 trillion. That's one followed by 99 zeros. A single stitch is the smallest possible structure in the universe. According to loop quantum gravity, each stitch only has a certain storage capacity. Think of it like a sponge, which can only absorb so much water. Once a sponge is completely saturated, any extra water just bounces off. The same would be true of space's loops. As material falls into a black hole, more and more stuff is crammed into a loop. But like a sponge, the loop will eventually become saturated. Anything else that falls in will bounce off and head in the opposite direction. Like a caterpillar turning into a butterfly, the black hole has metamorphosed into a white hole. In this way, white holes become a crucial prediction of loop quantum gravity. Should this theory turn out to be correct, it is even possible that white holes could help explain the birth of the universe itself. Most astronomers agree that the universe flashed into existence 13.8 billion years ago in an event known as the Big Bang. Energy and matter burst outwards from an incredibly small point. Could it have been a white hole? Could a previous universe have collapsed in on itself, saturating a loop until it reached its limit and rebounded outwards again? This is certainly the case being put forward by the physicists behind loop quantum gravity. If they are correct, then white holes are not just some obscure cosmic curiosity. They are a vital link between our universe and its ancestors. One that could ultimately explain why we are here to ask these questions in the first place. Space exploration has inspired humankind for decades, leading to many fascinating inventions, some of which we can even own, such as Novium's Hover Pen, the sponsor of today's video. Voted as one of the best inventions of 2022 by time, this is the Interstellar Edition Hover Pen, a unique, innovative, high-end product, a perfect pen for space fans like us. It has lots of impressive features that are a clear tribute to space and science, such as how the hover pen defies gravity, floating seamlessly in its specially crafted magnetic dock. It resists gravity at a 23.5 degree angle, which is the inclination of Earth's axis and is made from aircraft grade aluminium. Simply place this pen on your desk, set it spinning in its dock, and watch as it beautifully rotates like it's floating freely in space. I've had mine for a few weeks now and I love it. It feels balanced, comfortable to hold, and is great to write with. As you can see, I ordered mine in space black, but it comes in starlight silver, 
Mars Magma, and Neptune Blue. You can even upgrade to the Premium Edition, which is an 18 karat gold plated version with a real meteorite shard embedded into the hover pen, connecting you even further with the wonders of our solar system. Novium also offer the Future Edition, a 2-in-1 fountain and rollerball pen with an interchangeable tip. A great option if you want even more of a luxurious and expressive writing experience. So if you're looking for a space-inspired, timeless gift for a loved one or yourself, then click on the link in the description and use my code V101 to get 10% off on all hover pens along with free worldwide shipping. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did then remember to like and subscribe for much more to come. And if you would like to support my channel even further then why not buy me a coffee? A small donation goes a long way and helps me improve what I am attempting to build. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.